People are one of the most valuable resources available to any economy. If they're not healthy, educated, integrated into meaningful work, that's detrimental not just for the individual, but for society as a whole. Human capital means different things to different people. For some, it's about workforce planning within a particular company. For others, it's about looking at education and skills in an economy. We're trying to look at the entire human capital endowment of a nation and trying to understand from the day people are born to the day people die, how much are they being invested in and how well is that investment being leveraged by a particular economy. This is going to be particularly important for two reasons. One is the upcoming talent scarcity in the world. Despite high levels of unemployment in certain parts of the world, we're actually going to be facing a talent crunch. And so it'll be very important to understand how we get that talent for tomorrow. Second is population dynamics. Some countries are facing aging or aged populations, while other countries have youth bulges. They need to know where they stand today so that they can make the right kind of investments for the future. The Human Capital Index seeks to provide such a tool to business, governments, and civil society to understand what are the strengths and weaknesses of countries. It has four pillars. Education, health and wellness, workforce and employment, and the enabling environment. Imagine a country's population pyramid. For some countries, the challenges begin at the very bottom. So for example, in Pakistan, a child has about a 70% chance of making it into primary school, only about a 35% chance of making it into secondary school, and about an 8% chance of making it into university. And if that child is female, those chances are even less. Those are the losses for one individual. Now multiply that by a million and imagine the losses for a society as a whole. If you look at Spain, a lot of investments have been made in health and in education for several decades. And yet 40% of young people today cannot find a job. For yet other countries, the challenges lie towards the top of the population pyramid. Countries such as Japan, Germany, and others in Northern Europe, the critical factor will be how to ensure they have enough talent for tomorrow when they're facing such rapidly aging populations. If we look at the overall rankings, we find that Switzerland ranks number one overall, followed by Finland and Singapore, which is also the highest ranking country in Asia. Countries at the lowest end of the rankings include Nigeria at 114 and Yemen at 122. We hope that business, governments, and civil society will be able to use this report to understand where the gaps are, where the next set of investments should be made, and also how to collaborate with each other in order to further develop human capital.